Hello and welcome to another unit by unit video on Scardcast. Today we look at the trusty raider, main anti gravitic transport of the Drukhari army. Let's begin. <laughs> The Dark Kid. Hello and welcome to another unit by unit video here on Scardcast. I am Skari, your grateful host, and we've been looking at each unit in the Drukhari Codex. So today is no different as we dive in to the dedicated transport choices, starting with the Raider. So, if this is the first time you've dived in with me to a unit-by-unit unit video, I talk about the lore of said unit in the Drukhari Codex, and then we dive into uses and other tactical options in-game. If you'd like additional tactical content and a lot of exclusives, become a Patreon, join the Denizen community, which is like-minded gamers from around the world that help me create content. Check the link down below if you'd like to know more. But let's dive right in to the Raider, which is a very iconic unit in any Drukhari army. So either you're going to use them or you need to know what they are and what they can do. The first sight of a Drukhari real space raid is a glimmer of unlight that appears in the sky, unfolding and spiraling outward to become a shimmering portal ablaze with green flame. Through this ethereal gateway come dozens of bladed skycraft, arrowing towards their bewildered quarry with the single-mindedness of sharks that have scented blood. Lightweight and extremely maneuverable, raiders epitomize the Drukhari belief that velocity trumps over durability. Unlike the sluggish vehicles of the Imperium, raiders do not hold their passengers within metallic shells. Instead, they are more like the gliding pleasure boats of the ancient Eldari. A bait adapted for extreme speed and fitted with sword-sharp blade veins and jagged keels with which to cut apart the foe. Though each of these craft is customized by its owning cabal, witch cult or homunculus coven, and adorned with the body parts of conquered victims, or have certain key features in common. A repulsor keyblade manned by a talented steerman, an ether sail to harness the energies flowing from the portal from which they descend, and a prow-mounted heavy gun to sow terror amongst the enemy. The curved hull of each raider is sheltered by sweeping fairings and its metal deck is pierced through with tessellating designs to lessen the craft's weight. Sickle blades, electroshock rams, and gun racks are also frequently mounted upon raiders, for the Drukhari will gladly use any weapon at their, disposal, po at their disposal. At first glance, the raider is so pared down and streamlined that it appears to be more of a racing craft than a troop transport. True enough, when its engines are at full burn, it is capable of keeping pace with even the miraculous skimmers of the Azuriani. Nonetheless, troop transport is the raider's primary function. Those embarked upon the raider from, uh, are protected enough from incoming shots without blocking line of sight to their prey. As such, a fully loaded raider becomes a terrifyingly mobile base of fire, ferrying those within to where the fighting is thickest whilst they level ceaseless streams of death at those they fly by. Once victory is secured, any surviving enemies will be lashed or chained to the raider or simply impaled upon its trophy hooks. Those Drukhari who have died in the raid, as well as those whose injuries have removed them from the fight, are also carried back to Kamra with a marked lack of dignity, heaped in a gory tangle of limbs or hung like rag dolls from the raider's spiked hull. So... It is that raiders have gained the grim reputation across the galaxy, their arrival signifying torture, dismemberment, and death. <laughs> so raiders are primarily troop transports. 
They uh, swarm like locusts, and they are filled with drukari that are armed to the teeth. After a raid, they're used as means to transport back uh, casualties and treasure. So they're not only a troop transport, but an attack craft, and also a sort of um, transport as well for goods that they can hang on the side or keep on the hull itself. Pretty cool. Raiders work that way in-game as well. So let's dive in to the Raider itself. Its rules, what you can use. You know, everything I'm telling you comes from the Drukhari Codex, so make sure that you get your own copy if you want to go into more detail. I do encourage questions in the comment section, so ask me a question. I do read through all of them, and I will answer if you have a question in relation to the Raiders. So a Raider is 5 power level, 65 points. It's not too bad. Um, it has movement uh, that goes basically based on wounds. So at 6 to 10, so it has 10 wounds, 3 to 5 and 1 to 2. So three tiers. So movement and ballistic skill and attacks uh, are at the highest at the top level. So movement 14 base with a ballistic skill of 3 and 3 attacks. It is always weapon skill 4. Strength 6, toughness 5, so it's very lightly armoured. 10 wounds, it has 7 leadership, and it has a 4 plus save. It doesn't look like much, but you're paying in utility more than in toughness. Uh, 3 to 5 wounds, it has 10 inch movement, 4 plus ballistic, ballistic skill, and D3 attacks. And from 1 to 2 wounds, 6 inch movement, 5 ballistic skill, and 1 attack. So it can be crippled pretty extensively. A raider is a single model armed with a dark lance and blade veins. The dark lance, basic, iconic weapon of the Drukhari army. A 36 inch heavy one, strength eight, AP four with D6 damage shot, like a last cannon with an extra AP and one less strength. When this weapon is equipped on a vehicle, it goes from heavy to assault. So it is really an assault one weapon, which allows the raider to move and shoot with no penalty when it, it with its heavy weapon. It's war gear opt and the blade vein is a melee weapon that strength four minus one AP one damage. So you miss out on the ability to use its strength six if you use the blade veins. However, you do get the ability to have minus one AP, which can be relatively handy. War gear options. This model may replace its Dark Lance with a Disintegrator Cannon. The Disintegrator Cannon is an Assault 3, 36 inch gun that is Strength 5, minus 3 AP and 2 damage. This is probably my favorite weapon and it's also cheaper than a Dark Lance. So I enjoy it a lot because it's very efficient and can be used against infantry and tanks as well. This model may take Splinter Axe. So Splinter Axe are a cool, like, gives the, the Raider an ability if this model has splinter axe, then each time a model that is embarked upon it shoots a splinter pistol or splinter rifle, and you roll of a six plus to hit with that weapon, it scores two hits instead of one. This does not apply to relics. So having a unit of 10 Cabalite Warriors inside with splinter rifles, with splinter racks on the radar, means that if you roll the hit, any roll of a six plus, will be two hits instead of one. You don't get a, it's just an additional hit, which is pretty cool. Um, now it isn't an unmodified roll of a six, so it is uh, subject to modifiers, but um, it means that a small unit of raiders, which is 60 points for 10, in a raider with splinter axe, which is 90 points base, looking at 150 points for a unit that could potentially do a lot of shooting. So splinter axe are situational. If you like a lot of poison weapons with some of the Drukhari obsessions that let you re-roll the hit or things like that or re-roll wounds with splinter weapons you know you can really start getting a lot of benefit from large unit of cowboy warriors in raiders this model may take items from the vehicle equipment list so we went over this in the uh, ravager um the Ravager video, which the link is in the description if you want to check that, but vehicle equipment include chain snares, grizzly trophies, a phantasm grenade launcher, or a shock prow. Now all these have different rules, so I'm going to go over them here as well. 
because some of them are situational, but some of them can be kind of handy in that precise right situation, which, to be fair, I really, I really like things like this that kind of add to the value of a tank. So let's start with chain snares. A chain snare allows the tank, essentially, to reroll hits of one when it attacks with its blade veins. So if you are in combat, you get three attacks maximum, hitting on fours because they're ballistic skill, weapon skill four, which is not bad for a tank, and then rerolling ones to hit. Situational because you can have an Archon around that does the exact same thing, or if it's a witch cult raider, then you can do that as well with a succubus around. So situational. If you like to keep yourself in transports and you've got a few points to spare, you know, could be handy. Grizzly trophies is an interesting one. Roll a d6 each time a model flees from a unit that is within six inches of any enemy models with grizzly trophies. For each roll of a six, one additional model flees. So, say you have a big unit of infantry conscripts, or cultists, or orcs, or something, and you have a raider with grizzly trophies nearby, and they, you shoot a lot, they lose 10 models, so their leadership now is minus 10. So they roll a dice and they're gonna lose an additional eight models, for example. So therefore, you would, and they lose eight models and they're within six inches of this radar. So you'd get eight dice and roll, and for every six, an additional model will flee. So maybe not as valuable against armies that have lots of cheap models, but could be quite handy against multi-wound, tougher units with a couple of leadership negative modifiers, adding in like a Harlequin or a Psychic Power or turn five on the Power from Pain, and all of a sudden you could have elite units running away and then potentially running away even more because they're scared of your grizzly trophies. You can also have a Shock Prow, which is a melee weapon. The Shock Prow becomes Strength of User, so Strength 6 for a Raider, minus 1 AP, and is 1 damage. However, you can only make one attack with this weapon every time it fights. Now, it is only one point, but it allows you to attack at Strength 6, which is good. If you charge, the weapon has a damage characteristic of D3. Can be kind of handy if you want to get that last wound off of a monster or something. Charge in, Shock Prow, D3 wounds on the turn you charge surprisingly handy and I've had it kill a few things in the past. If you have one or two points lying around you might as well just throw on a shock prow on your vehicle. The last one it gets is a phantasm grenade launcher. Now we went over this with the raider, I mean with the ravager, but it's an 18 inch range weapon that is assault d3. It is only strength one and one damage and no AP. But if any enemy unit is hit by a phantasm grenade launcher you subtract one from its leadership characteristic. So that doesn't seem like a lot, but if you do that and then you're turn five with a Drukhari, now all of a sudden that unit is minus two within six inches, and if you have another modifier and a Hemlock, which is another two, that's minus four or minus three leadership, and, and it can start adding up. Now the Phantasm Grenade Launcher also allows you to use the Torment Grenade Stratagem, which is a one command point stratagem. Roll the shoot, with the Phantasm Grenade Launcher, resolve the effects of the Phantasm Grenade Launcher, and then roll 3d6. If you beat the opponent's leadership, they take d3 mortal wounds, allowing your raider to get like a smite sort of attack with Phantasm Grenades, which can be kind of handy. It's like a cheap way of getting a Wave Serpent shield, you know? A little bit more stuff has to happen for it, but you know, you can try it out. So those are the vehicle upgrades. I like keeping my raiders relatively cheap, so I go for a disintegrated cannon, and then sometimes a phantasm grenade launcher, simply so I can have leadership shenanigans as well. Now, a raider does have a few abilities. The first one is it is open topped. So models on this, are, models embarked on this model can attack in the shooting phase, so you can shoot out of it. You draw a line of sight and measure range from any point on the model, which is really cool, gives it a big field of fire. When you do so, any restrictions or modifiers that apply to the model apply to the passengers. So if you, if you have a unit inside and the raider gets charged, if you fall back with the raider, the raider counts as falling back, which means the guys inside can't shoot. Now the raider can, but they cannot because they don't have the fly keyword. Um, 
The passengers cannot shoot if this model has fallen back, except uh, in the same turn. That you cannot shoot except with pistols, uh, if they're like tied in combat. Note the passengers cannot shoot if this model fall back, even though the raid itself can. So it's very specific. You can shoot out of it. Kind of cool. Keeps your guys inside safe. They can shoot out of it. It has a hovering special rule. Instead of measuring distance and range to and from the model's base, measure to and from the model's hull and or base, whichever is closer. So that's actually really handy when deploying out of it and you can kind of deploy in the second level of buildings or the bottom level of buildings. You know, when you know measuring range, you measure from like any part of the hull. Like it, it makes the, the presence of that model a lot bigger than just the base that it's on. So it's kind of handy. It's a good rule to have. I enjoy it. It also comes with a night shield. So this model has a five plus invulnerable save against ranged weapons. Pretty snazzy. It always has a five up save. Essentially, unless it's a mortal wound, you're getting a save. So last cannons, rocket launchers, volcano cannons, anything like that. Five up invulnerable save on a raider has saved many a raider on occasion because uh, the high powered shot of the enemy has been unable to penetrate the night shields. It does have the explode rule. So if it, uh, it explodes on a six, and anybody within six inches is D3 mortal wounds. So they're rather volatile. It's not D6, it's anyone within six D3 wounds. Splinter Axe, which you checked out. So the Raider is a transport. Now I want to take a little bit extra time talking about this, because a lot of transports in other codexes restrict who you can carry spe specifically to your obsession, to your cult, to your chapter, to your mask, to your... Um, uh, clan, like orc clan, that sort of stuff. So a model can transport 10 Drukhari infantry models. This is very important. That means you can have a black, Cabal of the Blackheart raider transporting Obsidian Rose infantry. You can have a Homunculus raider transporting Witch Cult infantry. Why? Because it's just Drukhari infantry that they can carry. Each grotesque takes the space of two models, and this model cannot transport scourges or skyboard models. So you can't put Helion inside, you can't put Scourge inside because they're big. Don't put jump pack guys in a raider or things that fly. But that adds that you can really have a very versatile troop transport with a raider. You can put whichever character you brought that are Drukhari characters in there. You can put a combination of infantry in there. You can have like Incubi and you can have a character and you can have a Lamian and, or you can have a Mandrake unit of five and then a Cabalite Warrior unit or you can have witches and racks or grotesques and a Drukhari character. It allows you to, to really uh, tailor that raider to the specific need you want, making it one of the most versatile troop transports in the game. So I do like the raiders. I think they're very, very good. They have the Eldari Drakari, Himonkis Coven or Cabal or Witch Cult special rule. So they do benefit from obsessions. As a Cabal, that means they could get a six up Feel No Pain with Black Heart. They can reroll ones to hit with a Flayed Skull and get faster. They can, uh, they, the Poison Tongue, they can like redeploy. Witch Cult, they get all the cool stuff uh, like Advance and Charge or an extra attack or things like that. So even with Homunculus Covens, you know, having a homunculus nearby will give it plus one toughness. So you can have toughness six raiders as long as they're running around close to a homunculus. They have the keyword vehicle, transport, fly, and raider. So the raider itself, iconic transport, very versatile in game, relatively inexpensive for transport and what you get in terms of gun loadout and ability to deep strike and use stratagems on. So very versatile. So let me know, do you prefer the Venom or the Raider? Now that is a question that I answered in an exclusive Patreon video. Thanks a lot to all the Patreons of the channel and to all of you that watch. Subscribe by clicking that button and the little notification button if you want to keep up to date with all the content that I do. And if you have any more questions, check the links down below to get more additional exclusive content. I'm Skari, your grateful host, signing off until the next video. Skari out. Thank you.